Hello, hello. Good evening, y'all. Good evening. Welcome. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Hey, y'all. We a little person today. Y'all all in my living room with me. Welcome to my house. <laughs> hey, y'all. Happy Wednesday. What is up, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. Today's going to be a good day. Well, good night. Y'all, let me, okay, let me say this. So, I'm so excited for this live, man. I'm so excited. Like, I was just like, God, you are so good. And I'm like coming on here with expectation for him to just move. Like, I, I came on here with expectation for him to do what only he can do. For him to deliver, for him to heal, for him to restore, for him to wake up people that's been asleep. Like, for him to resurrect the dead. Like, I'm literally, I'm excited. Like, I'm on here with expectation because I really believe God is going to move. I really do. So, um... What is up, y'all? Welcome. Get comfortable. I'm not putting the time limit on here, but we're going to be on here for a minute. Okay, because I'm prepared. I have my notes, have everything, so I'm super excited. So without further ado, we are going to welcome in the Holy Spirit. I already have my instrumentals going right now. Um, yeah, I got my Bible, got my little one-two setup, got my little Starbucks cut. Yeah, yeah. She cute! Okay, so we're just going to get straight into it. Um, welcome in the Holy Spirit. Got my instruments going. Make sure I have y'all notes, y'all Bibles, because we, we get into it. Okay. Okay. Super excited. Hey, Shay Shay. <laughs> okay. Baby, it's nothing demonic over here, but we're going to pray for you. Amen. Oh, God, I'm just so grateful. Just for this moment. Like, God is so good. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, we just welcome your presence in right now. We just ask that you descend like a dove right now upon your children. Lord God, we are gathered here today to glorify your name, O oh God. You have sent me here as a willing vessel to empower, to remind, to edify, to educate, O oh God, to encourage, to enlighten your people, O oh God, but to never entertain. And that's what exactly what I'm here to do, is to do your will and not my will or the will of man. Thank you, O oh God, for just being a great God, for you said in your word in Psalms 100, specifically Psalms 104, is to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, enter into your gates with praise. So not right now, God, we just thank you for being Jaira. We thank you, O oh God, for just being a healer. We thank you, O oh God, for being a comforter, for being a father to those who are fatherless, for, to be, for being a mother to those who are motherless right now, O oh God, a brother or sister to those who are in need. Father God, we just thank you for being a reliable dad. We thank you for being our refuge, our safety, our fortress, our strong tower, God. We just thank you. And we just welcome you in right now. We create an atmosphere for you. We welcome you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, if you don't show up, if you don't show up, we don't have a reason to be here. We have no reason to be here if you are absent, but I already know that you're here. And I just pray that your spirit, your presence, your power leaves a mark, an imprint on the people that will watch this on the live or the recording or the um, they're watching on replay. But I just pray that a mark is left when we leave this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 So, guys, we are gathered here today. I feel like a pastor, <laughs> you know how like they say it in the church, but we are here today to do Nuggets of Wisdom. If you follow my YouTube channel, I do Nuggets of Wisdom. I started a new series called Nuggets of Wisdom. And today's Nugget of Wisdom is a review of our February fast. 
that was initiated by our good sis avery lachey which i believe she is in here hey sis so um we're, i'm just basically going to do a review of um how the first week what it is that god was emphasizing to me during the first week and we're also going to get into testimony time so um nonetheless without further ado let's get into it so the very first thing that the holy spirit emphasized to me on this fast was that this is a challenge when you are fasting it's excuse me i'm saying excuse me to my table i'm that type of person to be like excuse me to my wall or something if i bump into it but anyways like holy spirit emphasized to me that this is a challenge so it's not supposed to be comfortable it's not supposed to be easy rather the purpose of the fast is for you to get uncomfortable the purpose of the fast is for you to be stretched. The purpose of the fast is for you to be challenged. The purpose of the fast is for you to be pressed and crushed so that you may come out as pure gold. Come on, Joe. This is a refining process is what he told me. And when something is refined, it does not come out the same way it entered. Don't miss this. It, when something is being refined... This means that you can expect purification, Holy Spirit said cleansing, improvement, and removal. That's what your fasting process should look like. A process of purification. Purification in your heart, purification in your mind. Cleansing, improvement, and removal. Some things are going to be removed in the process. It's so good. So that was the first thing he emphasized to me that this is a challenge. If you're going through a fast and you're like, oh, like, I mean, it ain't that bad. Baby, are you really fasting? <laughs> because a fast isn't supposed to be, oh, it ain't that bad. A fast is supposed to challenge you. You're literally starving your flesh. You're denying self. That's not easy. First point. Is getting your priorities together. If you have pen and paper, I want you to write this down. This is the first point of the night. Getting your priorities together. Now, what does that look like? That looks like seeking ye first the kingdom of God. And a, part, a scripture that partners with this point is Matthew 6 and 33. Seeking God's kingdom first. Now, what Holy Spirit um, spoke to me was this. My people, I'm calling for my people to put me back in my rightful place. I'm calling for my people to make me the priority. Not A, but the priority. Top two, buddy, not two. Sorry, the music stopped since your Apple Music account is being used on another device. Thank you, Google. Also, realizing that there's freedom. And provision in his presence when you seek him. So when you see God, there's freedom there. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when you're experiencing freedom in the presence of God, you're being released of the bondage of chaos. You're being released from the bondage of um, your own will. And you receive provision. You receive direction. You receive instruction. You receive clarity. In the presence of God. That's point one. Getting your priorities together. And what does that look like? Seeking ye first the kingdom of God. Making him the priority. Not a priority. Seeking out his will for your life. Not your own. And in his presence you will discover. Provision. And freedom. Provision. Direction. Instruction. Clarity. Freedom. You don't have to, your, your freedom. So that's free from, from bondage, free from um, being bound by chaos, bound by your own will, bound by, bound, by, bound by what society may deem acceptable. These are the gifts, that, the free gifts that he gives so freely. So good in his presence. That's point one, getting your priorities together. Point two Effective prayer. 
effective prayer y'all this one is so good like i was like okay all of most of us may know about the scripture second chronicles 7 and 14 and i'm going to read it for context y'all it's so good because like what so you know if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves you know that big one so i never looked at it like i never looked at it the way i did until you know when holy spirit downloaded Re fresh revelation so i'm going to read it and then we're going to go into what he downloaded onto me so second chronicles um this is chapter 7 verse 14 says y'all and this is so good y'all like actually i'm gonna start in verse 12 i'm gonna start in verse 12 this is second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 verse 12 starting verse 12 it says then the lord appeared to solomon at night and said to him before i even say that has God ever met you in the midnight hour? Has God ever met you in the midnight hour? Like what? It, it's just something like things change. Sorry about the shaking. Things change in the midnight hour. Like it's just different in the midnight hour. You know, I know somebody feel what I'm saying. Verse 12 says, then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself as a temple of sacrifice. If I shut the sky so there is no rain or if I command the grasshopper to consume the land or if I send pestilence on my people and my people who are bare, who bear my name, humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven Forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, many of us stop there, but let's keep going to verse 15. It says, my eyes, this is God speaking, y'all. He says, my eyes will now be open and my ears attentive to prayer from this place. From what place, God? From what place? Because I ask questions when I'm reading. I be wanting to know, okay? I'm going to read verse 15 again because it's so good. It says, God says, my eyes will now be open." And my ears attentive to prayer from this place. And I have now chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there at all times. So, you know, Solomon built this temple to glorify God. But I believe that God isn't just subject to a place. He's not just subject to a building. Okay. Rather, he is more concerned with the heart, the motive, right? He said, my eyes and my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to prayer from this place. So, so I'm like asking questions, baby, because it's like six o'clock in the morning when I'm reading this half sleep, crust in my eye. I'm like, Holy Spirit, what is wrong? What like, what is this, right? So he goes on to break it down. He says, humility and repentance. When you, okay, let me back it up. Let me back it up. Let me back it up. When you pray from a place of humility and repentance, the result is restoration, forgiveness, and healing. I'm going to say that again. When you pray from a place of humility and repentance, it will result in restoration, forgiveness, and healing. Okay? So your heart posture matters. Your heart posture matters. I challenge you with this question. When you pray, what place are you praying from? Do your prayers attract heaven? Is the Father... Eyes open and ears attentive to your prayer. What place are you praying from? That's good. That's good. And then he goes on to say, be reminded that humility displays dependence. Humility displays dependence. I'm like, okay, the Holy Spirit, break it down. So he said, John 15 and 5. Let's go there. 
John 15 and 5. John 15 and 5 is an excerpt in the Bible that talks about the vine and the branches, right? So, John 15 and 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. Right here, Jesus is establishing roles. So, you can never say, I ain't know my, I, just, I thought I was the vine. No. Here, Jesus established the roles. I am the vine. And you are the branch. Okay? I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit. To remain in is to depend on. If I'm remaining in God, I'm dependent on him. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. I understand that you were raised by a single parent. I get it. But when you enter into the kingdom of God, that independence go out the window. I know you probably had to take care of yourself growing up, take care of your siblings. You had to do it by yourself. You, you know... I get it. But when you enter into my kingdom, this is what the Lord is saying, y'all. When you enter into my kingdom, I'm pleased with your dependence more than I am your independence. I'm not amazed by how much you can do you doing bad by yourself. I'm not, I'm not amazed by that. I love you too. I'm not like, okay, okay, you can do it by yourself. Okay, you can you pay all your bills by yourself. Okay, okay, you got your own place, your own car. Okay, that y'all, God is not phased by none of that. Like, the world may be like, oh, she bad, she can do this, he can do this. Da, da, da. Holy Spirit, like, I'm meanwhile, I'm just waiting on you to depend on me. So, and that takes humility. And that's what Holy Spirit went on to say. Holy, Holy Spirit went on to say, humility is thinking less of yourself, but not thinking of yourself less. Thinking less. Humility is thinking of yourself less, not thinking less of yourself. Humility comes with a cost. Denying yourself. Humility comes with a cost. You have to deny yourself, y'all. This is so good. So good. So just to review the second, the second point, which is effective prayer. When you pray from a place of humility and repentance, the result is restoration, forgiveness, and healing. What place are you praying from? So good. Your heart posture matters. Third point. Worshiping the true God. Third point. Point one was getting your priorities together. I'm going to review everything at the end. Point two is effective prayer. Point three is worshiping the true God. Worshiping, hear this, the true God, because you know, people out here call people out here calling themselves God or you know, we, we gonna talk about it. But today, tonight, we're gonna talk about worshiping the true God. Okay. And we're gonna be reading from the place of Deuteronomy chapter four. And though the key verse is 29, we're going to, for context, we're going to read before that. Worshiping the true God. 
by the way this will be on youtube so if you're just now coming in you're like dang i missed it you know this will be on youtube um either tonight or in the morning but nonetheless it will be on my instagram when as soon as i'm done okay so when i was reading this um deuteronomy chapter four it's some things that um stuck out to me and i'm trying to see I'm going to read I'm going to read the scriptures that Holy Spirit highlighted and we're going to go from there. But I'm going to still turn to my notes where I wrote it. This is so good and God is just amazing. Okay. So good. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter four, starting in verse 15, it says, I'm reading from the CSB version. It says, diligently watch yourself. I said, oh, y'all coming in hot, ain't y'all? Y'all coming in hot. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So. Diligently watch yourself. We're starting at verse 15. It says, diligently watch yourself because you did not see any form on the day the Lord spoke to you out of the fire of Horeb. Going down to verse 16. So you don't act corruptly and make an idol for yourselves in the shape of any figure. An idol is anything you put idolatry is anything that you put before god it says <laughs> verse 16 says so you don't act corruptly and make an idol for yourselves in the shape of any figure a male some people say my idol is blank a person some people say my idol is a female or a male right or any shape of any figure. It could be um, crystals. It could be, um, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know, maybe even a cross necklace. I feel like sometimes, not even I feel, it's it's proven that we will take an, we will take creation and worship it as if it's the creator. I'm gonna take my time. Verse 17 says, or the form of any animal on earth. Some people make idols out of their dogs. Some people make idols out of cats. Some people make idols out of, I don't know, a lizard. Okay. I don't know. Why did I say lizard? I don't know why I just said lizard. Um, verse 17, or the form of any animal on the, on the earth. Any wind creature that flies in the sky. Verse 18, any creature that crawls on the ground or any fish in the waters under the earth. When you look to the heavens and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the stars in the sky, do not. Y'all, please hear this. Because this is like the root of the zodiac sign situation. Okay? This is the root of horoscope. Hear what I'm saying, y'all. Listen, y'all, it says, do not be led astray to bow in worship to them and serve them. I'm not making none of this up. This is in Deuteronomy 4, not verse 19. Okay, y'all. Verse 19. When you look to the heavens and see the sun, the moon, because, you know, they were like, what is your... Your moon, child, I don't even know. What is the rising in your, your, I don't even know. Like, I honestly don't even know. But I know, I, be, I believe they have like a moon and a, and a sun. Like, what is your sun? What is your moon? I, I mean, I've been asked that before and I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, verse 19, it says, when you look to the heavens and see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the stars in the sky, do not be led astray. Meaning deceived. Because Holy Spirit revealed to me that 
Idolatry leads to deception and deception leads to darkness and darkness leads to death. I'm going to say that again. Idolatry leads to deception. Deception leads to darkness and darkness leads to death. This, my friends, is the plan of the enemy. This is the plan of the enemy. Idolatry leads to deception, being led astray, which leads to darkness, which is ignorance, which leads to death. Verse 20, but the Lord, but the Lord selected you. Now, this is what stood. This is uh, two words that stood out to me. But the Lord, the two words selected you. You're selected. No matter what, no, no matter what nobody has said. No matter what they talk, they say about you, they could lie on you, they could cheat on you, they could say whatever they want. But the Lord has selected you. They may be talking down on your name, but the Lord has selected you. You may not have the qualifications, but the Lord has accepted, has selected you. You may not have the money for it, but the Lord has accepted you, has selected you. Maybe acceptance is upon, maybe somebody waiting on acceptance. Baby, here's your sign. Here's your confirmation. You've been accepted, my God. Because the Lord selected you. That's good. Verse 20, but the Lord selected you and brought you out of Egypt. Meaning Slavery. Iron furnace to be a people for his inheritance as you are today. So good. Then it goes on to say in verse 22, we, we jump into verse 22. It says, I won't be crossing the Jordan. I believe this was Moses. He said, I won't be crossing the Jordan because I am going to die in this land. But you are about to cross over. Y'all, it was almost, when I read, y'all, keep in mind, it's really early when I'm reading this stuff, okay? So, it was almost as if my eyes had, like, highlighted, like, they highlighted crossover. Some of you have been in bondage. Some of you, I'm in Deuteronomy chapter 4, I'm in verse 22 right now. I'm going to read the verse, then I'll talk. He said, but you are about to cross over and take possession of this good land. That's a word for somebody. It may not be for everybody. It may just be for one. But I have good news for you. You are about to cross over and take possession of the good land. Of the good land. You are about to cross over. Why? Because the Lord selected you. Verse 23 goes on to say, be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord, your God. That he made with you and make an idol for yourselves in the shape. This is him reiterating what he said. Be careful because he knows. That when in the land of the living, it's a lot of deception going on. So in his word, there are many warnings. My God, he's, he's saying, be careful. This is verse 23, Deuteronomy 4, verse 23. He says, be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord, your God that he made with you and make an idol for yourselves in the shape of anything he has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you cross over, hear this by the Spirit. When you cross over and you take position, possession of that good land that God promised you, be sure not to make an idol out of the, out of the blessing. Be sure not to forget the covenant that your father made with you. 
Be careful not to fall into idolatry, which, lead, which leads to deception, which leads to darkness, which leads to death. When you cross over and take possession of that good land, in the words of mankind, don't you forget where you came from. Don't you forget where you came from. When God blesses you with the good land. Don't idolize the land. Don't idolize the blessing. But you better take possession because it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. So things I want you guys to remember from this third point, which is worshiping the true God. Reference scripture Deuteronomy 4. We was in verses 15 to 24. All of this will be in, I was going to say the description box. <laughs> this is not YouTube. Well, this will be on YouTube. But all the details will be added, guys. But keep in mind <clears throat> that the Lord has selected you. No matter what somebody, no matter what nobody else say. The Lord has selected you, okay? And not only has the Lord selected you, but you about to cross over. And take possession of the good land. Remember, this word is not for everybody, but it's for somebody. Take it back to, to the Lord for sure. And Holy Spirit instructs us to diligently, to, to be diligent is to be careful. To be diligent is to be careful. He is instructing us to be diligent in watching ourselves. You better watch yourself now. You ever heard that before? Growing up, they'd be like, you better watch yourself now. And typically, when our family members would say, you better watch yourself, we're headed towards something that's not good for us. <laughs> oh, this is good. We're headed for something that's not good for us. You better watch yourself diligently. Okay. <laughs> so that was point three. On to point four. This is the final point. Point four, this is transform my mind. That's the title of this one. Transform my mind. Point one was getting your priorities together. The partner scripture with that point was Matthew 6 and 33. The second point was effective prayer. The part, the scripture, the scripture that partners with that point is 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Number three, third point, worshiping the true God. The partner scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 to 29. I'm sorry, 24. 24. Last point. Thank you. I literally just did my hair today. It looked a little crazy to me though. But last point, transform my mind transform my mind how many of us need how many of us need our mind transform i need a, i know i do i can't even talk i know i do transform my mind we're going to be starting in of course romans 12 and 2 that is this point's partner scripture romans 12 verse 2 This is so good. God is so good. He's speaking so good. Mm -mm -mm. Where is Romans? Oh. Romans 12 and 2. Yes, y'all, we need our minds renewed. Y'all, the supporting... Let, let me tell y'all this. Y'all thought that these first three points was heat. Y'all, this last point... Is gonna blow the socks off you. So if you're wearing socks right now and your socks blow off your feet, it's gonna be because of point number four. <laughs> Twelve and 
Transform my mind, Lord. All right, let's get it. Um, Romans 12. So we're going to, we're going to, for context, you know, you want to read before and after. So we're going to do Romans 12, starting in verse one. So it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. So sacrifice is connected to true worship. Don't miss that. Verse two. Do not be conformed to this age. Because, you know, they're doing some new stuff now. They're doing some new stuff in this age. In the new age. It says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So good. Do not be conformed to this age. Some versions, some translations say to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect. What is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So good. So that was Romans 12 verses 1 through verses 1 and 2. Something the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I read this is in order to change, you must first surrender. What did verse one say? I present. I'm reading from translation CSB, CSB translation. Verse one says, I present to you. My body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing, right? So when you present, so in this, in the text, we're encouraged to present something before God in order to experience true worship. Holy Spirit reminded me that in order to change, you must first surrender. Surrender precedes a transfer, transformed mind in maturing of the faith. Surrender precedes a transformed mind in maturing of the faith. He said renewal looks like me bringing your thoughts in line with mine so that you can think my thoughts. That's what renewal looks like. Meaning God is going to have to break some systems that we built. But we're going to get into that later. But I want to touch on it right now. God is breaking the mental systems that we've created as like defense mechanisms. Because he wants, he wants to renew our minds. Because if you want to change your life, you must first change your mind. In order to get what's next for you, next in line for you that God has for you, he got to change your mind first because there's power in having the right perspective, which is the God perspective. So renewal looks like God bringing our thoughts in line with his own so that we may think his thoughts. And this is a form of humility, guys. Depending solely on him. So good. To further support this point of transforming your mind. We're going to go to my favorite. The scripture I couldn't wait to get to. That's been beep beep. Like just, you know. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Y'all, this right here. Let me tell you something. I couldn't wait to teach this. Right now, we're in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Y'all, I could not wait to teach this scripture. It's so good, y'all. It's so good. And when I tell you, I was in my room like, like what? Okay, let's get into it. 
So we're going to start in, um, we're going to start in verse one. So it says, and this, this chapter is talking about Paul's apostolic authority. So it says, now I, Paul, myself appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I am humble among you in person, but bold toward you when absent. I beg you that when I am present, I will not need to be bold with the confidence by which I plan to challenge certain people who think we are behaving according to the flesh. Verse three, for all y'all hear this, please. It says, for although we live in the flesh, we don't wage war according to the flesh. Though we are humans, we don't wage war as humans do. So just because you got cut off in traffic and it's like, uh, or somebody cut you off in traffic, they cussing you out. Just because we're humans don't mean you got to cuss them back out. Because y'all listen, this is a spiritual Ephesians 6 tells us we wrestle not against flesh. And what is the text currently saying? For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. So though I'm human, my tools, my armor isn't made of flesh, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. And, I, and I, I solely believe that this is what sets God's children apart from the world. It's how we wage war. How do you wage war? Are you quick to respond with judgment? Are you quick to respond with unforgiveness? Are you quick to respond with bitterness, resentment, and cursing people out and being bitter, being petty? What is your response when you're faced with war? That's good. That's good. What is your response when you're faced with war? The next time you're faced with war, remember 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Though we are in the flesh, we don't wage war as humans do. Y'all, we're in this world but we're not of it. We just passing through. That's it. We just passing through. So good. Verse four says, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, your weapon is not that you can curse somebody out. Your weapon is not that you can punch somebody in the face. Your weapon is not that you can shoot two piece somebody. That's not the right weapon. That's not the right, that's not, that's, that's, I don't care how you was raised, where, where, where you was, where you live, where you was brought up. That is not the right weapon. It's just not. It's not, it's just not the right weapon. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish Y'all, this is so good. We demolish, y'all don't, y'all pay attention to the word strongholds. Pay attention to the word strongholds. It says, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, meaning the destruction, the breaking, the tearing down of strongholds. We're going to get there. We demolish arguments in every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. I got to read verses three through five again because it's just too good to not believe. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. I just heard clapping back on, on social media. I don't know who on here is like still doing the whole clapping back on social media thing. But but you using a wrong weapon, boo. You, you using a wrong weapon because you clapping back. It ain't doing nothing for the kingdom. Okay. 
Clapping back is the most powerless thing you could do. You know what a power for real? It's in your prayer time. Clapping back, waging war as humans do, is the most powerless thing you could ever do. It's powerless. It's powerless. Trying to get revenge is powerless. Vengeance is the Lord's. That's good. I mean, that wasn't even in my notes. Come on, we go. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage wage war according to the flesh. Okay? It says, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments. We demolish arguments. God, I remember hearing somebody say, we God did not send us here to win arguments. He sent us here to win souls. That's so good. So many of us trying to say, uh-uh, but I said this about Jesus. Cause da, 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 da. What you arguing with people for? What, what's like, it's no power there. We demolish arguments. And every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So good. I'm going to read the breakdown. Now, this is where I was like, oh, God, this is so good. This is so good. So it says by strong, because, you know, in the Bible, at least from what I've read, stronghold can be used in two different ways. Stronghold can be used as like, you know, like, God, you're my stronghold, my strong fortress, my strong tower. You may, you know, meaning something firm, right? But that's not what Paul was referring to when he mentioned strongholds. Listen to this, y'all. Because some of you on this live may be experiencing some strongholds. Wait until I read this. So it says, by strongholds, Paul isn't talking about a physical fortress, but about destructive patterns of thought that lead people astray. There it is again. In our prior points, it mentioned being led astray, meaning being deceived, right? So it says destructive patterns of thought can lead to deception. And it can hold, y'all, this is so good. Please hear this, y'all. It says, and hold them, meaning us, hostage to sinful, harmful, and addictive behavior. Paul is referring to a stronghold as a destructive pattern of thought because everything starts in the mind of thought that lead people astray, holding them hostage to sinful, harmful, and addictive behavior. It says this is accomplished through blocking the knowledge of God. So good. A strong code is accomplished in your life because at some point you are blocked off from the knowledge of God. Meaning you are somewhere in the dark because darkness is ignorance. Knowledge is light. It says, this is accomplished through blocking the knowledge, through the blocking of the knowledge of God from penetrating the mind in the life of the believer. Y'all, oh, this is so good. It says, if addictive behavior is present in a person's life, that behavior, behavior is not the stronghold, but merely its fruit. Jesus. What addictive, what addictive behavior that you possess, what kind of fruit has it produced? Strongholds can be demolished by the knowledge of God. Y'all, it's so many of us living in darkness and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. This live will be saved. It'll be posted on my Instagram and on my YouTube. 
Y'all, so many... Oh my gosh. I'm going to keep reading. Strongholds can only be demolished by the knowledge of God. That is by truth. As Jesus told his disciples, the truth will set you free. When your relationship to the living word connects to the written word, you will really be free. Oh my God, y'all, this is good. This is good. Many of us are living a life according to our will right now. And we think that we're free. Oh my gosh. But baby, you really in darkness. Darkness. And that mindset, that stronghold can only be demolished when you are exposed to the light and when you receive it. Because some of us have been exposed but haven't received it. That's good. Some of our stubbornness, our disobedience is blocking us from experiencing the knowledge of God, the fruit. Because you want to live your way. Oh, Y'all, this is good. I told you this last point was crazy. Uncomfortable. Convicting. That's what I'm here to do. I never want to get off live and you leave here comfortable. Absolutely not. Then I did not do my job. Y'all, God is saying, oh my gosh, y'all, this is so good. It says, if you are not taking every thought captive to obey Christ and are instead succumbing to a stronghold, meaning you are in agreement with this thing, you, you like, oh, this bestie for real. It's because you either don't know the truth or are making use of the truth that you do know. Oh my gosh. Do y'all hear this? If you are not taking every thought captive to obey Christ and are instead succumbing to the stronghold, instead you, you, you besties with the stronghold. It's because you either don't know the truth, you're, you, you're ignorant of it, or you're not making use of the truth that you do know. How many of us have been ignoring the truth because a lie is more comfortable how many of us are ignoring the truth because the lie feels so good it's comfort in the lie it's comfort in my will it's comfort in my sin no baby it's bondage Jesus it's bondage but wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I believe, I decree and I declare that there's freedom here right now. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading the commentary of verses 3 through 5. Jesus. I released a prayer the other day about prayer for strongholds. Because I felt in my spirit that many of God's children are in darkness. Like they're suffering. Like it's like it's just something blocking them from experiencing the fullness of who God is. Like I don't I didn't I didn't know what it was, but when I was praying, I felt the spirit like just drop on me like a bomb and just was like, my children are in darkness. My children have made friends with the stronghold. But in order to demolish that stronghold, you must not only be exposed to, but receive the knowledge of God, y'all, which is the truth. Some of us have been ignoring the truth because the lie is comfortable. Y'all, this is, I'm going to get off of this. Y'all. But I believe strongholds are being broken tonight. I believe chains are being broken tonight. I believe the, the system, the, the mindsets, the systems we built in our mind. 
that exalts itself against the knowledge of God is being broken tonight. Tonight, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It's being broken tonight. But in order for it to be broken, you got to want it to be broken. How bad do you want it? Jesus asked the man at the well. Whoo! He asked him, do you want to be made whole? I ain't got nobody to put me in the water. Who you waiting on to be free? Because when you get to them pearly gates, he ain't going to ask about you and your girlfriend. He's not going to ask about you and your boyfriend. He's not going to ask about you and your best friend. He's not going to ask about you and your sister, your mama, your daddy, your uncle, and your, your pet, fish. He's not going to ask about you and somebody else. He's going to. He wants to know about you. Who are you waiting on to be free? What are you waiting on to be free? You've been at the pool for years. There was this saying I was about to say, but I heard the Holy Spirit stop me in my tracks. But I'm going to tell you what Holy Spirit said after I said what I was going to say. I was about to use a saying and say, you can't get healed in the, place, the same place you were sick. But I heard Holy Spirit say, when I show up, things change. My God, he said, when I show up, things change. You can heal in the same place you were sick. It's evidence in the Bible. God healed the man at the pool, y'all. The same place he was sick, he healed him. I'm so glad Holy Spirit stopped me in my tracks because one thing I don't want to bring to my live nor my platform is carnality or is flesh. I don't want to bring that to this because it's not the place for that. I was literally about to say, you can't, you can't get healed in the same place you were sick. Holy Spirit, Jesus said, God said to me so quick, I, when I show up, things change. Jesus. When I show up, things change. And that's a miracle. That's a miracle. That is so good, y'all. That is so good. That is a conclusion, y'all, of the four points. And I'm going to review them. And then I'm going to go into testimony. And we're going to pray and we're going to close out, okay? So the first one is getting your priorities together, okay? Okay? And the part of scripture with that one is Matthew 6 and 33. We got the second one, which is effective prayer. Partnered with 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. We have the third point, which is worshiping the true God. Okay. Which is partnered with uh, Deuteronomy 4 verses 15 to 24. And lastly, we have transform my mind. We have Romans 12 and 2. And we have 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. So good. Okay, so the last segment of Nuggets of Wisdom, which is what I call this series, is testimony time. So my initial, or not even initial, but my main reason for getting on live today is um, to review the fast. Those of you who don't know, I'm fasting the whole week of February. Um... And it is a true challenge. I will put all the details if you're wanting to join us now. I'll put all the details on my story. And I'll also tag my good sis, Avery Lachey. If you hear Avery, you know, let them know they can come to your page. I love you, girl. Um, but now we're going to go on to what has God been personally teaching me on this fast. And I know that we overcome by the words of our testimony. And there is breakthrough in confession. And that's something that God was teaching me about earlier this year is that there's breakthrough in confession. You guys see Avery right there. You guys can follow her, go to her page, and you'll see all the details about the fast. Um, oh, actually, before I go into that, let me read the very first thing that I mentioned that I hadn't repeated. So when you're going on a fast, it's meant to challenge you. 
okay? It's meant to challenge you. Holy Spirit told me that it's not meant to be easy nor comfortable. The purpose of this fast is for you to be stretched, for you to be uncomfortable, for you to be challenged, for you to be pressed and crushed so that you may come out as pure gold. He said this is a refining process, meaning you can expect purification, cleansing, improvement, and removal. You can expect purification, cleansing, improvement, and removal, okay? This will all be on my YouTube description box, okay? So stay tuned because I'll be posting it either tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay, let's get into testimony time. So what has God been teaching Alexis? Y'all saw my veins? What has God been teaching Alexis during this fast? So, um, but like I was saying, before I go further, I was saying that I believe that there's breakthrough in confession. I'm a very private person, but my platform calls for me to share a little more than I would like. <laughs> um, and there are many people experiencing what I'm currently experiencing in my life and the things that I am going to share. So I believe that there's going to be breakthrough tonight. Like I said, when I first got on live, I'm expecting God to show up. He's already here. But I'm expecting him to break chains and, 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 and give breakthrough and restore those who need it and heal those who need it, deliver those who need it. So Holy Spirit, continue to do your thing. So one of the things, the very first thing that God is teaching me during this fast is what it's like to have a father. A father-daughter relationship. I do not have the greatest relationship with my earthly father. Um, at all. And my relationship with my father, my earthly father, tainted my relationship with my spiritual father. And how I viewed my earthly father was kind of how, you know, would view God. Kind of like... You like, okay, like, you know, like, okay, I grew up in a church, you know, yes, God is good, one, two. But as I begin experiencing for myself, I'm like, wait, you're not like my earthly father. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, things are different here. And something that God is showing me is security. I struggle with just like being. I'm secure as a woman, but secure in like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm going to put it like this. I desire to have security in God. Okay. I just, I desire to have security in God. And I felt like that's what I was lacking with my earthly father was security. So it says, um, I was just saying, I, in my notes is that like, God is teaching me security and like protection that like, I can find security in him. Um, he's, he's a protector. He's going to protect me because I haven't always felt that way towards my earthly father. Um, just mentioning that there's safety. There's safety in him. There's safety with my feelings. I don't have to worry about God rejecting me because I'm too sensitive or I'm vulnerable or things of that nature. Like my feelings, my confessions, my, my realness, my authenticity is safe with the father. Um, and this is still an ongoing process. We haven't quite, you know, perfected it yet. But God is definitely working, you know, it's a process, it's a process. Um, love, love is another thing that God is definitely like, um, yes, um, Devet, Deveta or Devita, I saw that and I was like, God, that's crazy. And the day you commented that was the day my dad and I had a situation. So thank you so much for uh, putting that comment. Um, I took it to God in prayer for sure, but, um, just love, like how to love. Um, I just chow. It's like when you don't receive, I believe like, obviously there's power in a mother's love, but I believe there's also power in a father's love. And you know, your father, the father's supposed to be like the protector, you know, things of that nature. And I just didn't feel that growing up. So when you're not getting love from the place, you know, you go out and you like, what? I mean, well, where is that? You know, you just start looking in other places. And that's what I began doing. So God shared to me, remember earlier I was talking about systems. So something God shared to me is that I'm breaking a lot of systems that my children built to protect themselves as defense mechanisms. But in actuality, in actuality it's hurting them. 
And for me, my defense mechanism was shutting people off or, you know, just being prideful, being stubborn or, you know, things of that nature. And I honestly believe, oh, another defense mechanism for me was independence. Just feeling like, God, okay, like I hear what you're saying, but I've been doing this. Like, and he was like, you know, so I believe that God is, um, it's his desire to free me from that burden of feeling like I have to like do it by myself or I can't trust in men or things of that nature or I have to have it figured all out. He's definitely giving me peace there for sure. So that's the first thing that God has been teaching me is that I can rely on him. I can trust him. He got my back. I'm safe in his arms. Um, he's going to love me through everything. Um, that my secrets are safe with him. Just things that I never felt with my earthly father. I'm learning that I can have, um, you know, that relationship that I desire and that even be exceeded with God. So, and it's just been very difficult, but you know, cause it's like my whole life, I, I didn't have a man telling me what to do. And it's like now with God, he's like, and I'm like, what? I'm like fighting God on some things. Cause I'm just kind of like, I don't want to do that. You know, just kind of like making my own decisions, but definitely seek ye first the kingdom of God. Cause it don't lead to your understanding for sure. Um, the second thing, the second and final thing I'm going to talk about in terms of like testimony is um god just sharing with me the importance of obedience and surrender it's so it's so much so much important that importance in that um i'm currently in a season where god is calling me to do a thing and i haven't done it because i don't want to go through the pain and the suffering if i'm being honest i don't want to go through the pain and the suffering um he revealed to me this morning actually that the very thing that you're running from is the thing that you need the very thing that you're running from is the very thing you should be running to. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, what? I'm just like, what? And honestly, just recalling the last two drastic situations in my life where I had to go through the pain and suffering. It's like that valley season, it birthed a phenomenal woman. You know what I'm saying? It definitely birthed versions of me that I didn't even know was within me but it took me going through the valley in order for that version of me to be birthed you get what I'm saying so um what it took to become that woman it just was super painful you can't hear me can anybody else hear me you may have to come out go out and then come back in but basically um what it took to become that woman it just was very painful it was it was just very painful for me but god is saying you know like the longer it takes for you to be obedient you you're going to be delaying the very thing that i have for you and i'm just like okay this morning i'm just like yes sir so all i kept hearing was surrender 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 so it's just so much importance in obedience is so much important importance in surrender um and just having the correct focus having the correct focus was something else he was talking about and he mentioned to me that sometimes we are just simply focused on the wrong thing we're focused on the wrong thing um in my notes he says what you focus on magnifies he said for some of you you focus so much on your situation that now your situation appears to be bigger than me now you're in distress you're hyperventilated i'm he is so funny you're hyperventilating you're overthinking you're anxious and some of you have become doubtful wow that's that's really good i'm gonna read that again so basically some of us are focused on the wrong things right and holy spirit is saying what you focus on it magnifies and for some of you you have focused so much on your situation you focus so much on what you got to give up or what you can't eat or what you can't do that now that very thing appears to be bigger than me and he says now you're in distress you hyperventilating you overthinking you're anxious and you're maybe even doubtful and this morning, God told me, you're focused on the wrong thing. He says, switch your focus. He says, your focus shouldn't be on what you have to give up, but rather on who you're about to become. It will birth out of that. And I just was like, ooh, that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, Dad. I'm going to repeat it. This morning, God told me, he said, Alexis, you're focused on the wrong thing. 
switch your focus. Your focus shouldn't be on what you have to give up or what you can't do anymore, but rather on who you are about to become and what will be birthed out of that. He also, y'all, Holy, Holy Spirit was just spitting fire this morning. He also said, higher places require you to do harder things. And I was like, huh? I was like, say that again. He said, higher places require you to do harder things. So for many of us, God is taking us higher, but it's going to require for us to do harder things. So good. Harder things. Um, lastly, I just want to remind you all that he'll never put more on you than you can bear. And though it's not written in scripture, I do want to reference a scripture that does support that saying. And it's in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 10 and 13. So it says, no temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. But God is faithful. He will not. And this is the part that I believe pairs very well with that saying. It says he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. God will never put more on you than you can bear, no matter how hard or tough it seems. It says he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with temptation, he will also provide a way out. How gracious is he, my God, so that you may be able to bear it. Um. And also, and lastly, I want to say is why would the God, why would the incredible God we serve set us up for failure? And that is conclusion of today's nuggets of wisdom. Why would the incredible God we serve set us up for failure? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna let you be in this situation, but I know you're gonna drown. Like, absolutely not. He's definitely birthing a conqueror out of you for sure. It's difficult, but the higher you go, the harder it gets. Um, I pray that this was a blessing to you all. I truly enjoyed this. I believe that God did his one, two, for sure. His one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, so I'm going to end us in prayer and then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. All right. Heavenly Father, I come to you as humble as I know how. I just want to say thank you. Like this was beyond what I expected. I just thank you for the beautiful souls that join Lord God. Um, I thank you for just allowing me to be a willing vessel to pour into your people. First of all, thank you for pouring into me. And thank you for allowing me to pour into your children. Thank you for trusting me with your sheep, Lord God. I do not take it lightly at all. So Father God, I thank you for the mantle that you blessed me with. I thank you for the tribe, the community, oh God, the platform, oh God. I just thank you for it. And I pray that you continue to help me steward it well, Heavenly Father, for it is to glorify you and not man in Jesus name for sure. Father God, I just want to say thank you for the words that came out today, the conviction that was felt among your people, oh God. I pray that you give your people enough courage to not ignore the conviction, to not ignore the construction, the instruction that you have sent out tonight, but that you will allow them to take heed to what it is that your word said, oh God, for you are not a man that shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. And wherever you send your word out to, it will accomplish exactly what you wanted to and not return to unto you void. So, Father God, we just thank you for being a man of your word. We thank you for being a faithful father. We thank you for being a reliable dad. We just thank you, oh God, for being so gracious. We thank you for being so strategic and intentional, oh God. We thank you for providing a way out. Oh, glory be to God. We thank you for providing a way out for those of us who are um, in darkness right now, Lord God. I just speak light into their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Father God, I pray that the word that was spoken, the word that was delivered, permeate and penetrate the hearts and minds of your people, oh God. I'm praying, I'm decreeing and declaring right now that an imprint will be made in their mind. An imprint will be made in their heart. In the name of Jesus, an imprint will be made in their notes that they will never forget this moment. They will never forget this night. But moreover, they will never forget what you said, oh God. For we are here to glorify your name. We are here to magnify you and you only. Not our situation, not um, our circumstance, but to magnify you, Heavenly Father. Father God, right now we ask for forgiveness for you, for it is you alone that we have sinned against, oh God. So we ask right now, as David said in, in your word, 
to creating us a clean heart and renewing us a, um, a steadfast spirit right now, oh God. For you also said in Psalm 51, help me Holy Spirit, that the best sacrifice, a sacrifice that is pleasing to you is a broken spirit. So help us to find beauty in coming to you in our brokenness. Help us to find beauty in coming to you in our weakness, oh God. For you also said in your word that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So we thank you for being a strong tower. We thank you for being a mighty God, strong in battle. We thank you for being a strong fortress, my God. For whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will come in and lift up a standard. So right now, oh God, we thank you for lifting up a standard. We thank you for sending your only begotten son to die for us, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood, the blood that never loses its power. I believe that the blood still works. And we thank you, oh God, that the blood still works. We thank you, oh God, that your blood will prevail in every dynamic, my God. I decree and I declare a divine interruption in the camp of the enemy. I came to serve hell. Notice that devil, you have lost a Another one, my God. Though we do not, we are in the flesh, we do not wage war as humans do, my God. Oh, Jesus, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty by the pulling down of strongholds. So, right now, in this moment, oh God, we pull down, we demolish strongholds in the name of Jesus. We give you full permission to break. Oh, my God, something has to break. We give you full authority, oh God, to intervene into our situation, oh God. We give give you full authority to break what does not serve you. We give you full authority to break down the barriers, break down the blockage, break down the walls that are blocking us from experiencing the knowledge of God. My God, I hear chains breaking in the spirit. I hear strongholds breaking in the spirit right now. I hear systems being broken in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we surrender right now in this moment, oh God, and we take heed to the radical spiritual transformation that is happening right now oh my god the devil can't stop this one come on now the devil can't stop this one i feel the kingdom of darkness rising but i tell you this a thousand may fall at my side ten thousand at my right hand but no evil shall come not thee my god because i take re refuge in the heavenly father my god god is my refuge hey he is my refuge. He is my safety. I'm dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty, my God. Therefore, I am protected. Hallelujah, God. We are protected under your wings, my God. There is freedom under your wings, oh my God. There is provision under your wings, my God. There is comfort. There is love. Woo! Under your wings. So, Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We, oh, y'all, I feel the spirit of the living God. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to experience your sweet spirit. We thank you, oh God, that you showed up. Hey, we thank you for just showing up. We thank you for just showing up, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I decree and I declare that we will not leave here the same. I decree and I declare, oh my God, that there is a renewal happening in the spirit. I believe there is restoration that is taking place, oh God. I decree and I declare that your children would not leave here talking the same. Hey, I decree and I declare that your children would not leave here thinking the same for it says in your word to be not conformed to this world, but be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Father God, we surrender right now our mindsets to you and we give you full authority to renew the way we think. My God. Right now we come against the spirit of idolatry. Hey, glory be to God. We come against the spirit, the spirit of idolatry for you downloaded unto me. That idolatry leads to deception. And deception leads to darkness. And darkness leads to death. Woo. But God. But God. Father God, we come against the spirit of idolatry right now in the name of Jesus. For you are a consuming fire. You are a jealous God. There will be no other before you. Right now, oh God, we come against any altar. 
Right now, I bind every witch and every warlock that is challenging me in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'm calling you out. I bind every witch. I bind every warlock in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Woo. For the blood of Jesus is against you in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you. Glory be to God. We come against the altars. We come against the altars that were created. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, I just see it in the spirit. Altars being created. Oh, Jesus. Glory. Mm. Thank you, oh God. We come against those altars and we say right now that they dry up. They dry up in the name of Jesus for the blood of Jesus is against them. We come against zodiac signs and, and just worship and creation and horoscope. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Our sign is your son. Woo! Our sign is your son, oh God. Our sign is the blood that he shed it on that cross. That is our sign. Woo! So I come against all of this new age right now in the name of Jesus. For your children will not conform to being a Scorpio. Robo he robo Sokaya. Your children will not conform to being an Aries or Taurus or whatever it is. But they will recognize that the only sign is your son. Woo! That the only sign is your son in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. The only sign is your son. So right now we thank you for your son. And the blood that he shed it for us in the name of Jesus, my God. Woo. Altars are being dried up in the name of Jesus. It's being dried up in the name of Jesus. No longer will you worship creation, but you will worship the creator. Woo. We will worship the one and only true and living God in the name of Jesus, my God. Woo. Help us to be diligent, my God. And watching ourselves help us to be diligent in not um, idolizing creation or the blessing, my God. But staying in a in a in a in a posture of gratitude, oh God. Remind us to keep the covenant that you made with us in the name of Jesus. He Oh Jesus. Oh glory. I feel you. Thank you, God. They will not leave here the same in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declared. And every devil huh, that's trying to war with me in the spirit, baby, you, you, you're fighting a losing battle. You're fighting a losing battle. I'm fighting from victory. You have already lost. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your word declares in Luke 10 and 19, for you have given us authority. And dominion to tread on scorpions and serpents in the name of Jesus. But you also, you also said in that text to not get so excited that demons know your name. But get excited that your, your name is written in the book of life. My God. Hallelujah. Mm. Be excited that your name is written in the book of life. My God. Woo. Glory be to God. Woo, demons are trembling. Woo, my God. Someone, some of you are being made aware of the power that you carry as his heir. Ha! Some of you are being made aware of the power that you carry as his heir. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the authority that you entrust us with. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We believe that deliverance is taking place right now. We believe that your children are surrendering right now. We believe We believe that restoration is happening right now. We believe that a spiritual transformation is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Woo! God is saying, you are now unrecognizable. Woo! Don't miss that. God is saying, some of you have become unrecognizable. My God, you're going to have to get to know you again. He's saying, but the only way for you to do that is to seek ye first. The only way for you to do that is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. My God. Oh, Jesus. My God, you won't leave here feeling the same. You won't leave here talking the same. You won't leave here thinking the same. My God. Because the spirit of the Lord is here, that's why. Because the spirit of the Lord is here, that's why. In, in, in the middle of my message, I heard God say, things change when I show up. Oh, my God. So, Father God, all we're asking you to do is continue to show up, my God. We thank you for what you've done, oh God. If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. Huh? 
If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. Father God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing right now. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Though we may not feel you working, though we may not see you working, my God, that doesn't mean that you're not. Oh, my God, remind your children. Some of you feel like God has forgotten about you. Who? Jesus. Some of you feel like God has forgotten about you, but God is saying, who? Be not weary and well-doing, but who? My God, Jesus. He's saying, be not weary and well-doing. Who? My God. Who? Who? Jesus. Mm. He said, I haven't forgotten about you. Oh, Jesus. Help me, oh, God. He said, I'm building your strength up. Who? I'm building your faith up. I'm building your character. Oh, my God. Robo Shoto. He said, if I send you too early, you'll. Oh, my God. He said, if I send you too early, you'll ruin a blessing. If I see you too early, you'll sabotage the blessing. My God. Who? In the name of Jesus. We come against oh, low self-esteem. I feel that. We come against low self-esteem in the name of Jesus. Ooh, some of you have been feeling unworthy. Oh, Jesus. Some of you have been feeling unworthy. My God said, you're more than enough. Huh? Because his word declares, oh, God, I feel you. First John 4 and 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My God, he said, don't forget what's in you. He said, it's in you. It ain't on you. Oh, my God. He said, it's in you. It ain't on you. My God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. Baby, it's hot. My God. Woo, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Woo. Mm. My God. Woo. I hear him saying it's done. I hear him saying it's already done. Who? my God. He said, don't you spend another night worrying about how it'll get done. Oh, my God. He said, don't you spend another night worrying how it'll get paid for. Oh, Robo Shoto. He He said, don't you worry yourself another night. My God. Woo. He said, I'm taking care of it. He my God. Oh, Jesus. He said it's already done. Woo. He said it's already done. Who? But if you just trust me. Oh, my God. He said if you just stand still who? and hold on to your peace. Oh, Exodus 14 and 14. He said, I will fight for you, my God. He said, many of my children are exhausted spiritually. Robo Shoto. Many of my children are exhausted because they're too busy fighting the battle themselves. My God, he said they're too busy fighting for themselves. But I said in my word that I will fight for you. Just hold your peace. Just hold your peace. Just hold your peace. What kind of peace? The peace that surpasses all understanding, my God, that has the ability to guard your heart and your mind. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oof. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit definitely arrested me. My God. Woo! Jesus. Oh, we. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Woo! Mm, mm, mm. My God. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> Woo! The Holy Spirit arrested me, my God. The Holy Spirit arrested me, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus. Jesus. My God. Who? Glory. I hear God saying there will be glory after this. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night. But joy. I hear that for someone. My God. Weeping mm, may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. God is saying, I'm collecting every tear. Some of you, when you seek God, all you do is weep. I hear that. I see that. Actually, some of you, when you seek him, it just looks like weeping, my God. But he's saying, I'm collecting every tear. 
my God. Thank you, God. Oh, Jesus. Whew. God is so good. God is so good. Oh, God, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your power, my God. He is all powerful, my God. I just. Mm. Jesus. Ooh. There's a refreshing happening in the spirit, my God. Ooh. Ooh. I just see God filling somebody up again. Somebody came here on E. My God. I just. See in the spirit, God filling you up. Jesus. Whew. He's so good. There will be glory after this. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Ah! I love God so much. Y'all. Y'all, God is so good. Oh my gosh. <sighs> One thing about me, I let the Holy Spirit do what he gonna do. Oh my gosh. <sighs> wow. Holy Spirit move like I have your way. I will not rush the Holy Spirit. Who? My God. My God. Wow. He is doing a new thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I am like. <sighs> that was not me. This was none of me. This was none of me. Because without him, I'm nothing. This was none of me. This was, this was all, this was all the Holy Spirit. This was all the Holy Spirit doing. This, this is live. This is platform. I'm just a vessel. That's it. I. I'm literally just a vessel. I. You got it, God. You got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, Jesus. You got it. God, you got it. I am like, this, this is, this has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with me. Mm-mm. 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 This has nothing to do with me. My, I just, the glory oh, is so thick. It's too good to not believe. It's too good to not believe. I am so speechless. Mm -mm. Wow. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Jesus. Y'all, I 
tell me that. I don't need to have words. I'm not supposed to. I just want to say, oh God, oh Lord. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna do this. Actually, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Literally, Um, I don't want y'all just have to be sitting here with me. <laughs> I'm gonna go have my moment offline. Um, I just want to say thank you for joining the live tonight. <sighs> oh my gosh. Um, thank you for joining the live. Holy Spirit showed up. Um, I really don't have nothing to say. Um, just continue. I can't even talk. 
just continue to seek him um um you to see Kim um I'm going to post this on YouTube tomorrow but it'll be on Instagram tonight um I love you guys and God just he just didn't been too good I'm not supposed to be here right now. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here right now. After all I've done, no way. No way. No way. The fact that I just said I'm not supposed to be like I'm not supposed to be here I just looked on my desk at a journal that my best friend bought me and it says perhaps this is the moment for which you were created and um, that's an Esther 414 <laughs> God is here I forgot this was even sitting here, but it says, perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. And I literally just said, I'm not supposed to be here. Wow. Wow. I forgot this was even on my desk. Um, I'm going to get off the line now, but I love you guys and, um, this will be posted on Instagram and tomorrow it'll be posted on YouTube. So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for your gifts and I will see you guys in the next content. Thank you so much.